Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about my hair routine and answering some of your most asked questions. So we're gonna get right into it. It's a long one. So get cozy, get a cup of tea or something, and I hope that you enjoy. Head underwater, I'm falling back into you. I thought we'd be smarter, I got nothing left to lose. You said you fall with me. So I just wanted to quickly go over some information about my fenugreek spray and this is just something that I've posted videos on before and you probably <laughs> discovered my channel through my TikTok. Um, a lot of you have, I know that, um, but this recipe has a lot of questions that come with it and instead of replying to so many messages all the time, which I love chatting with everybody, but sometimes it's hard to keep writing the same thing over and over again. So I thought it would be really nice to just have a place where you could come and kind of have it clearly explained to you because I maybe didn't do the best job of doing that in those previous videos. So I wrote down some of the most asked questions. Um, I'm also going to show you how I apply it. So the first thing is that I just want to remind you to store it in your fridge. You want to make sure that you store it in the fridge, otherwise it's going to go bad. There's no preservatives in it, so you just got to make sure that you're keeping it in the fridge. If you have it out for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, it's okay, but just make sure that you are always put it back in the fridge. Um, I've had a few people asking about like little spots and stuff, and then I ask if they're keeping it in the fridge and they're not. So just make sure that if you're going to use this, you store it in your fridge. Next is how long does it last? So I just want to say that the recommended amount of time is typically a month and I am able to stretch mine longer. I just kind of check up on it and make sure that it's still good. So um, I usually get two to three months out of mine and then I make a new one and I can kind of tell by the smell when it's time to make another one. The next thing that people want to know and I get asked this a ton is how often to use it. So this is not like a perfect science or anything like that. I would say um, I personally use it every other day. Um, sometimes I stretch it to three days. If my hair is doing really well, I can go um, every other time I wash. So that would be every four days. It just really depends on your hair. So when I first started doing this, and if you're just starting out or just recently started out, I would recommend doing it every time you wash your hair and I would not recommend washing your hair every day. So I would say do it every other day. I typically wash my hair Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then sometimes on the weekend, depending on what I'm doing. So I would say try doing that, wash your hair those days, do the spray those days and then over time you can kind of see what works for you and adjust it but that is what i do another question that i get asked is when do you wash it out and do you use shampoo or just water um i personally wash it out about 15 20 minutes sometimes five minutes after applying it and i do use shampoo so that's what i recommend doing if you want to do an overnight treatment every couple of months you could do that. I personally don't feel comfortable doing it very often. If you want to leave it on for a couple hours, go for it. If you want to wash it out right away, that's fine too. I just got the best results from at first starting with like 30 minutes, then going down to 20 and so on and so forth. And I always wash it out with shampoo, so that is my preference just because it gets a little bit crunchy after a while. The other thing that people want to know, probably one of my most commonly asked questions of all time, is do you oil your hair and 
If so, do you put the fenugreek spray in when you're oiling your hair? So I personally wouldn't recommend doing them at the same time. And I don't oil my hair very often, if anything, like maybe once a year. But I would say I'm not a scientist. I'm not a dermatologist or anything like that. So I don't know the exact science behind this, but I just go based off what I feel comfortable with and that is to use the fenugreek spray alone and then wash that out and then i would recommend maybe doing the oiling on a different day or you know whatever you feel comfortable with but my thinking behind that is just that i wonder if the oil would create too much of a barrier and the fenugreek wouldn't be able to penetrate it um so that's just my theory but i really don't know so that's just what i would do but if you feel like you want to try doing both at the same time go for it. I can't tell you what's going to happen, but just see what you think. So now I'm going to show you how I apply my fenugreek spray. I know a lot of people are curious about this and I think that I did a much better job of explaining and showing it this time. So hopefully this is helpful. <laughs> So I just wanted to quickly walk you through my shampoo routine, which is very simple. Um, but just since people sometimes ask, I just wanted to let you know. So the days that I wash my hair, I use this, which is Maple Holistics Argon Oil Shampoo. And this is very moisturizing and it does do a really good job of cleaning my hair. It's color safe, ethically made, natural ingredients, recyclable materials, paraben free, sulfate free, GMOs, BPAs, synthetic fragrance, synthetic colors, phthalates, and cruelty free. So I really love this. It's only $9. I always have it linked below because this is one of my absolute favorites. And I recently tried the tea tree version of the shampoo just for kind of a clarifying shampoo so i used to use garnier pure and clean but ever since i started using kind of like cleaner products this is what i've been using so this has been working pretty well or you are also welcome to use tea tree essential oil you want to make sure you're using therapeutic grade essential oils just so that you're putting the best things on your hair especially in a period of kind of like growth or hair loss or whatever it is if you're hair sensitive you want to be using the pure stuff so this is what i use and this works like a charm as for conditioner i will put up on the screen what i've been using it's a natural conditioner and it has been working for me for now but again i will take your recommendations as always and then i usually shampoo monday wednesday friday and then either saturday sunday depending on what my plans are for the weekend and how my hair is looking or whatever after that i just kind of like take the towel and try to soak up as much of the water from my hair as possible i don't rub it or anything like that i used to but not anymore since my hair is a little more sensitive now and then i will wait a little bit until my hair is a little bit drier to brush it out with my wet brush and then i typically let it finish air drying and at that point, if I'm not doing anything, I'll just keep it that way. Uh, my hair is naturally straight, but if I do want to style it, I'll just take like a round brush and the hair dryer, which I'm not going to show you because I'm not like very good at it or anything. So it wouldn't be like a tutorial, but I just take the round brush and hair dryer to kind of define all my different layers. Super simple. And then at night, I will either just put my hair up in like a soft scrunchie or I will put dry shampoo at night after washing my hair um, so that when I wake up in the morning it's not greasy so that's my first day hair routine and then I will also show you in detail my second day routine which is a little bit more interesting <laughs> okay so this is my second day hair and I just have it up right now <laughs> But when I take it down, you can see it's not super greasy or anything, which that's just how it's been lately, but it is really staticky because it's so cold here. Um, I'm on the East Coast, so it's very freezing. <laughs> it's very cold. Um, so 
Basically what I do is at night, I will sleep with a hair tie like this, like a scrunchie. Um, this one is like a satin material and I try to keep it pretty loose. I just put it in a ponytail, but I don't think I have much of a crease. Okay, so yesterday I washed my hair around like five o'clock in the afternoon. And then at night, what I do is I put my hair up with like a satiny scrunchie like this or something a little bit looser and bigger. Hopefully you can see that I don't have really too much of a crease. And so that is really the goal. So if I wanted to just quickly put some dry shampoo and wear my hair like this, I could. But in the winter, it's really hard to wear my hair just like straight and down um, just because of the static and the cold. So I'm going to show you how I put my dry shampoo on and then I'm gonna show you how I would style my hair if I had to go somewhere today. So this is the dry shampoo that I use. It is actually a recipe that I make myself. Um, it's very simple. I have a whole video on what I use, but this just contains arrowroot powder, cocoa powder, and some essential oils. And this works really well for me. I've personally never been able to use traditional dry shampoo in like an aerosol can. Um, the sprays, they just have never worked for my hair. I've always had relatively thin and fine hair. So using those aerosol sprays almost makes my hair look greasier. Um, so this has been a lifesaver. So all that I do is I just section off my hair and then I just pour a tiny bit in my hair. Hopefully you can see that. And then I just, I just rub it in with a little makeup brush that I only use for this purpose. And then I do a couple more sections on each side. Um, I find that this is all that I really need, but you are welcome to obviously adjust this however you see fit for your hair. If you have lighter hair than I do, you can omit the cocoa powder in your dry shampoo recipe if you choose to make it as well. I'm thinking you were made for me. It's in my birthday yet, cause I gotta say I'm looking like a gift. Super messy and easy. <laughs> Um, and then I just like to do one section in the back because it's not that easy for me to do. And then I just rub it in a little bit and then brush it out. And you can see that you cannot see it. It's really good, blends right in, and it smells really good. And then my hair is perfect for the rest of the day. So now I'm just going to show you how I style my hair on second day hair because it's definitely different than my first day hair. I usually use this curling iron. I've had this for so long. This is a Remington, I think one and a half inch. I really like that it has like adjustable heat and I've literally had this for probably 10 years and it's still going strong, still works really well and I don't feel like it damages my hair too much. So what I'm going to do is clip up the top part of my hair, which I like to section off the part that is shorter. The way that my hair is cut right now it is in different layers and lengths so that is why i like to just separate it and i think it just looks a little bit prettier that way so i just take about this much hair maybe like an inch or maybe even two and i wrap it around the curling iron and i leave a tiny little bit um off of the curling iron and i just kind of feel until it's hot i kind of like to count to 10 and then let it go and then just put it in the back and afterwards I'm going to brush it out. But I'm just gonna do that all the way around and then I will show you how I do the top pieces. But 
I really like that this curling iron is tapered so you get kind of a bigger curl at the top and then it tapers down. So I love, I just love that look. Another thing that I always do is I curl away from my face. Um, sometimes if I want to try something new, I'll try doing like every other or whatever, but typically I like to curl away from my face. I just think that it's easier to manage throughout the day and it kind of um, just stays out of your face, which I really like, so. Baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe and right away so that's all i have been filming for 12 minutes now and i think probably six of those were me talking yeah if i were to do my makeup today i would do that now before brushing out my curls but for today i'm not gonna be doing i just have a little concealer on i'm just gonna brush out my curls now so you want to wait like maybe a minute or two and then i just start from the back Just some really soft curls that stay pretty much all day and I will have some curl left tomorrow as well after sleeping on it and everything. And I just really like how it frames the face and it looks very voluminous without having to use rollers, although I do love rollers. Um, this is just a little bit quicker. So I am obsessed with that curling iron. I don't know if they still sell it or not, but if they do, I will definitely link it below. So as you can see, I really enjoy having just a simple hair routine, especially if you're going through hair loss, finding ways to style your hair that make you feel good about it, even when it's in that stage of being sparse in certain areas. Something that I did want to mention is if you have kind of that bald spot right here that I obviously had, if you go back and look at my videos, you'll see. Um, I used to take this section of my hair and you could take the curling iron and just wrap it like this and that will kind of create just a smooth surface on the top to kind of cover that area as best as possible. So that's another little tip that you can do. Something else that I used to do, which helped me a lot actually, is I would take some brown eyeshadow, I would just put it in any spots that felt like they were really bothering me, and it helped me a ton to just like get through the day and not think about my hair too much. I would put it back here on that bald spot, like I said. I would put it on my hairline, um, in my part a little bit, just anywhere that was making me upset that day. Don't feel bad about that. If you need to cover something up to feel better, go ahead and do it but also know that so many people struggle with hair loss. So I just want you to know that you're not alone and there's always a way to get through these times. So whether the same thing works for you or not, um, that worked for me, there's always something that will end up working and that you will find that um, changes your hair and changes your mood and your life. So some of my favorite things, you could be the power it all begins. You could be the first and the second and the third and So some of you may remember from my previous <laughs> hair update video that I was kind of going through a little bit of a weird hair loss phase. Um, I kind of was just 
losing more hair in the shower and when I brushed my hair and everything. So I was kind of just being a little bit more careful and not washing as often. Um, but recently I actually received a comment on one of my videos where somebody mentioned to me that if I use a lot of natural products, which I do, um, that you need to be cleansing your hair a little bit more, like a deep cleanse. So a couple things that I use are either tea tree oil. So I will just put a drop of this straight from the bottle into my shampoo. I'll just bring it in the shower with me and drop one in and then that will kind of help cleanse your pores on your scalp. Another thing that I have is my tea tree shampoo and this is also kind of the same idea. Um, sometimes I will mix that in with my regular shampoo. Um, the other thing that I do is an apple cider vinegar rinse, which is essentially two parts apple cider vinegar to one part water. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that. The apple cider vinegar is a cleansing agent and will essentially just kind of help empty out your pores. It'll get out any residue of either oil or product that you use in your hair. So it's really good to help your scalp kind of regenerate and open those pores so that your hair is able to continue growing and you're able to grow new hairs. Um, so if you're using the fenugreek spray, if you're using the shampoo that I recommended or any natural shampoo, um, any natural remedies like that, you're gonna want to do a little extra cleansing. So you can also use a clarifying shampoo of your choice. And I have to say thank you to that person. If I could find the comment, I will. But thank you so much for that recommendation because truly I think that helped my hair a ton. We also recently changed our water, which I think has been helping. And another thing that I've been doing to kind of combat that shedding is just to wait until my hair is pretty much dry to brush my hair and just go really slowly with the wet brush to get the tangles out. Another thing that was contributing to the hair loss that I was going through a couple months ago, I think my hairdresser had mentioned this to me. I wasn't using conditioner enough because I don't have one that I really like because using too much conditioner on my hair can kind of make it not last as long, like I have to wash it more often, so I try to avoid that. Um, but if you have any good conditioner recommendations that have relatively clean ingredients, please let me know because I'm still kind of on the search. But I will also show you in this video a conditioner that I've been using. <laughs> My dad actually ordered it and I ended up liking it, but I think I need something a little bit more moisturizing. So your recommendations are definitely welcome. So as far as the apple cider vinegar rinse goes, I only do that once a month or so if it's been a while since you've done a cleanse you'll know because you'll have almost like a waxy buildup or your hair will just get greasy way faster than it normally does which is how i usually know um so at that point you want to do your clarifying shampoo or your apple cider vinegar rinse or whatever it may be something i wanted to mention um that has worked for some of my friends actually is rosemary oil. So if you've tried the fenugreek spray and it's not necessarily working for you or um, something is just, or it's just not happening as fast as you'd like it to, this is something you could try. So I would take a drop of rosemary and make sure that it's only one drop, maybe two, no more than that. And just put it straight in your shampoo, just like the tea tree. Um, and rosemary. Rosemary is known for its hair. Rosemary is known for its properties of like increasing hair growth and stimulating your hair follicles. So this is definitely good to add to your shampoo if you're just looking for like a little bit of a boost. I know some of my friends have had really good success with that. So I just wanted to mention it in this video in case you need a little something different or extra to add to your routine. Just in case you needed something different or extra to add into your routine. So while we're upstairs, I just wanted to quickly show you a couple of my um, items that I keep in my like everyday hair drawer. I'm not going to show you the drawer because it's a disaster, but um, the first thing is my hair brushes. So I have the wet brush, which is one of my favorites. This is what I actually use more right now. Um, I kind of go through phases and I clean it out the best I could. But yes, I have a Beauty and the Beast one with a bell on it. Um, this is in my stocking a couple years ago, but I actually... Beauty and the Beast is like my all-time favorite Disney movie um, besides Lion King. They're kind of equal. 
but what's yours because this is my favorite um and i just like how soft this is and it doesn't like yank my hair out and i also do brush very gently um the other thing is my tangle teaser so the bristles just look like this um this is also very soft and flexible and it just you know does the job it doesn't you know hurt my hair or hurt my scalp or anything and it doesn't yank the hair out like i said it's very dirty i probably need a new one of these i've had this one for years and years but i love my tangle teaser as well um both of them are really good on wet hair but i like to let my hair dry a little bit before brushing it just um as a general rule another thing that i keep in here are well tons of clips i have tons of clips in here these four are actually all from the dollar store these ones come in a pack of two and they are my absolute favorite clips right now i like to do like a little half up with these or um like a little twist or whatever um but these come in a pack of two like i said for one dollar well now 125 um and these are so good so if you see these at your dollar tree definitely pick them up they hold really well especially for thin like slippery kind of hair these also are from the dollar tree and they come separately but they don't do the best job and my hair tends to get stuck in this part a lot so um that's just kind of a random what's in my drawer and then the other thing that i use is my dry shampoo so this is my dry shampoo i use this makeup brush to apply it. I actually make this myself at home, so if you're interested and you've been looking for a dry shampoo that actually works for you, especially if you have thin hair like me or very fine hair that doesn't do well with like the aerosol sprays and stuff like that, this is a really good option. It works really well and you just have to make sure you cleanse well after using it. So if you're curious, I will link the video and I will also show you how I apply it. Oh, another thing that I keep in my bathroom is called mermaid spray and I actually make this myself as well. This has rosemary, cedarwood, and lavender essential oil in it and um, witch hazel and it's just really good for detangling. I believe I also have a little bit of conditioner in here just to help detangle a little more because I was experiencing a lot of like just tangles recently and this has been helping that so i just like to keep this on hand i don't use it every day but this is actually also really good for hair growth because it has rosemary oil which i will talk more about in a second but this is just something really easy to have i also thought i would just quickly show you what i use to put my hair up besides the clips um so these are my favorite hair ties for when i'm out of the house they have like this little thing they, there's no crease really that's left behind and they're just really soft on your hair um another thing that i love are these like bigger scrunchies they're very soft and looser so i like to use these at night um just to kind of give my hair a little break and so that it's not painful for me to lay on i don't really like to sleep without my hair up just because my hair is so long and it gets in my face and it gets stuck under me and stuff like that so it's a little more comfortable to sleep with it up and then the other kind are just these the other kind that I like are just these thin um, scrunchies that are looser and they're like a little satiny and I just love these for everyday wear. I always have one on my wrist and it's just easy to put my hair up and again it doesn't like hurt or pull my hair. Those regular scrunchies with like the um, glue that attaches it, those really hurt my scalp and kind of give me a headache so I prefer all of these soft options and these are nice if you want to kind of hide it. So that is going to be all for today's video. I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope that it gave you some hope and I hope that you enjoyed watching it in general. Um, I'm going to be doing one hair video a month. So if you have suggestions for what that should be, please leave it in the comments so that I can do videos that you are going to love and that would be helpful for you. And I hope to see you back here on next Tuesday, which will most likely be a Valentine's related video. So I will see you then and I hope that you have an amazing week. I wish I could make you stop, cause baby I love